Hello, um, I'm Paul Weiss and I wanted to show you some of the modifications I've made to my uh, Trek 920. Um, different than the manufacturers had sent it in. Uh, this bike was built up of my friends at Cyclemania in Portland, Maine. Um, it's a fantastic bike. I'm using it as a uh, touring bike, uh, mixed touring with uh, gravel and some trails and road. And I think it's one of the best bikes out on the market. Um, it's a, a really fun bike that's kind of a combo bike. I used to do a lot of touring with a Surly disc trucker. And um, I like that bike a lot. It was a good touring bike. This one's a little bit geared more uh, rugged, a little more off-roady, fatter tires. Um, little different type of setup with the frame um, and I'll get into that in a little bit but first I want to just show you some of the things that have been cha I changed on this now this bike as of 2021 I don't think is being sold as a whole bike you can only get the frame and you have to build it up which is I'm not sure why Trek did that I think it was a mistake but um, they did it anyways uh, some of the things that I've put onto this bike are um, double-sided pedals. Now I have the time pedals so you can use a flat shoe on here or you can use the the time pedals. They also make Shimano pedals similar. I put um, four water bottle cages on here so they're carbon and they're super light and strong and you can fit four different water bottles different sizes you can do long ones Another thing, it comes with the front and rear rack system, which is really great. It's an aluminum rack, very strong, and has a lot of solid connections. I put on um, fenders. These are SK, SKS fenders. Um, they're made in Germany. They're a really nice fender system. Uh, they're very light, strong nylon and they've lasted for a few years uh, without any problems. If you do a lot of road riding or any road riding on your tours or muddy road riding, um, you want to have fenders. Um, getting all that water spray up your back and on your gear, it makes a messier bike, so I would highly recommend fenders. I also added a carbon seat post. Um, just add a little uh, lightweight to the bike. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with the other seat post, but this is a nice one. Uh, a leather saddle. This is a Sella Anatomica, and it has a cutout on it. So this is a really nice handmade saddle. It's one of the best out there. It's similar to like the Brooks saddles, uh, B17 saddles. So I'll go through a couple other things on the bike. Um, I'll show you what it looks like with fully decked out panniers. Gearing's pretty good on this bike. Um, the disc brakes are fantastic. I'd highly recommend them. Uh, and the other thing is I put a light on here. I'll talk to you a little bit about that. So I'll show you the rest of the bike uh, a little up close. This bike has a built-in kickstand. It's detachable, but it's drilled right into the frame and it's at rear of the pedals which is a nice place for it so you can work on your bike. I'd highly recommend a kickstand if you're going to be using panniers. I did a lot of trips um, like in Iceland where there's basically no trees and no place to park your bike. You're always out in the open and when you're camping it's really nice to have an upright bike. So a kickstand may seem like a uh, an eccentric item but it's really I think a very important the Trek one. 920 has these really awesome racks which have the lower bars that you can mount the lowrider panniers on and it also has um, extra water bo bottle bosses on the front fork so not only there are the four but there's two more one on each fork that you can mount I don't have them mounted but they're a great place for mounting extra items these are uh, 50 C tires a two inch tire they're the Maxxis Ramblers, and they're really nice um, tire to have. 
Um, there's other good tires out there also. I would recommend the 50C, which is a really nice wide tire. You can go all over gravel with this. It floats pretty well in sand. Um, and also it's uh, tubeless. Uh, the bike comes tubeless ready, but you have to buy the insert for the inside of the tubeless kit and then also your, your um, latex. And But then you get a set up tubeless. I'd highly recommend it. It takes a little more maintenance, but you get less flats from things like thorns and punctures. And you can really run them at a little lower pressure than I think you normally would with a tube. You can't get the pinch flats. So I would recommend the tubeless setup. I really like it. It's been great. I've done many, many tours now and have not had any flats. And of course these wheels are 700C, which means they're the largest wheels, um, standard large wheels. And they really roll well over a lot of bumps. I would recommend them over the smaller size 26 or 27 and a half. I really like how large they are. But if you're a smaller person, um, you might want to go with a slightly smaller wheel, um, five foot ten, nine and a half, I think. And um, the 700 C wheel is fantastic. Would highly recommend it. These wheels are also um, through axle wheels, which means that they um, are really strong um, axle setup. They're a little bit harder to get off, but they're much stronger. Um, design and also the brakes are really powerful hydraulic disc brakes um, they're really powerful amazing strength I would highly recommend these I mean you need two fingers and you could stop a full bike with touring setup um, here's an open skewer of, of a, a through axle but um, really good brake setup the SRAM brakes are fantastic I added uh, a blinker light here. I would highly recommend there's a lot of different blinkers, but make sure you get one that has multiple modes and also one that will last the entire day or two when you're out riding. So really get a good blinker. Um, this is a hot shot blinker and it is USB rechargeable. So you need to be able to recharge it with your onboard batteries. Um, so I would highly recommend this one will go about 15 hours, two days, easy. And then also you need the front light, and this is just a USB-powered, powerful front light that's on the um, frame. It's a really great light, and I really recommend the USB power system. That way you're charging from one battery that can do all your different um, lights that you have on your bike and other things like cameras and phones, etc. Of course, you want to have a good pump, a frame pump, or this one, which is nice. It comes off and can be has a little um, latch that you can pump uh, with your hold it with your foot and while you pump. So there's lots of good ones out there, but you definitely want to have a good one that either attaches to your frame or goes into your bags. So what does this bike look up look like fully decked out? Well, here it is. Um, this is on a trip this past fall around Baxter State Park in Maine and the Katahdin Woods and Waters National Monument. Um, all off-road except for about 10 miles. It was a five-day trip. And these are Ortley brand pannier setup, which fit just amazingly well on this bike. Um, the nice front handlebar bag has its own holder and then uh, two full rear panniers and two full front panniers a little bit smaller than the back. Um, these are fully waterproofed with really amazing uh, fold down tops, um, roller tops so that they're pretty close to 100% uh, waterproof. I mean if you put them into a river they might, underwater they might get wet but in the in the pouring rain they're never going to get wet and you can submerse them part way <laughs> so they're a great system they attach really well onto these racks um, and these racks are made almost designed for them you can kind of see that they're loaded a little bit below the top of the rack on the second level uh, so they're just an incredible system I really love these Ortlieb they're really the state of the art for touring sort of the gold standard. I mean, there are other good systems out there, but I, I really like the Ortlieb. Um, they're by far my favorite rack. 
So in the top Ortley bag, I have a big uh, rechargeable battery, USB battery, shown here. But normally on the back of this bike, on the top across the, the panniers on the back, I put a uh, a 15 watt solar panel, and that can charge that entire battery in less than a day, and it really works well. It attaches just with bungee cords, and it's a fantastic solar panel. You can get these on Amazon or any other site. Make sure you get a high enough wattage one, at least like 10 watts or 12 watts, because they'll really charge your battery fast. I have a 20,000 milliamp hour battery, and the full solar panel um, will charge that thing up and keep it topped off. Then at night, I can recharge my Garmin and my phone and any other electronics you have, like the two lights, uh, if you need to recharge those. So it really is a perfect system. During the day, you're recharging your battery, and then at night, you're um, recharging anything that needs um, charging. Uh, and even during the day, my Garmin Edge 1000 um, it can only last for like six hours, seven hours, so I need to plug that into the battery while it's on the bike. So I do that during the day, and the solar panel is recharging the battery. Usually don't need to do it the whole day, I find the system works much better um, than the recharging systems that they have um, from wheel hubs. Um, the hub chargers are nice, but they don't put much wattage out. They do about 4 watts, and they also cause resistance on your wheel. So the solar panels don't have no resistance. Of course, they weigh a tiny bit more, but they give a, a much bigger charge, so like a, a good... Uh, hub charger is you know like 4 watt output and the solar panels I have are like 12 to 15 watt output so it's putting out double what the hub chargers do and you can just set it up at a campsite or during lunch just leave it out in the sun you don't have to be riding for it to charge so I find the solar chargers are a much better system uh, I would recommend them you just have to be careful about the connections and make sure they're always being checked and that you always make sure it's connected because the one time I had that mistake where it was charging I thought all day but it wasn't connected it had fallen out so you got to be careful with that but yeah that's the kind of setup I have um, it's really just a fantastic setup and I do want to talk about the difference between this touring um, you know all-terrain touring bike and a, a true full bike packing bike so what's the difference between this and a regular touring bike <clears throat> and a full um, bike packing bike? Um, this is sort of in the middle, and that's why I bought it. I had the Surly Disc Trucker, which is a great bike, and it's a perfect touring bike. This bike can do bike touring, but it also can do a little bit more off-road. Um, because of the wide tires, the hydraulic disc brakes, and the frame setup, uh, it's an aluminum frame. It's pretty light and strong. It's a great all-around bike set up with painters. It can go just about anywhere. However, it isn't a full, what I call a full bike packing bike. It could be converted into one if I changed, took the racks out, and just used um, frame-mounted uh, painters. And let me show you the difference between that and a full bike packing bike. Now, the next model up the trick makes is called the 1120 and it is a full bike packing bike this is sort of a hybrid between a touring bike and the full bike packing bike it could go either way and that's why I bought it and why I like it um, but let me show you my friend Jim's bike which is a bike packing bike now my buddy Jim has the salsa Fargo this is a pure bike packing bike a very similar frame but different. The differences being the tires on this bike are a little bit wider. They're two and a half inch tires. Mine are two. Or these are I think 2.6 or 2.8 actually. So a little bit fatter tire. And there's a lot more mounts for water bottles like on the dropouts, on the front dropouts. The gear is strapped to the frame in a number of ways and the, you could see the saddlebags are not the panniers that I have they're not attached to a f to a rack they're directly attached to the frame so they can take a little more pounding and they're they're 
sort of tied in a little bit better so there's less system sway or potential for breakage because my painters even though they're Ortlieb and they're very very strong they are only there's only uh, like three attachment points for them on each rack whereas these type of uh, bags are attached on many many points usually by fabric as you can see and so they're they can take a much bigger pounding and also they have a narrower profile so the bike is narrower like when you're going through brush in real backcountry stuff my painters would be really hanging low and rubbing on everything whereas this bike could kind of go through grasses and brush a lot more easily and also the bags are centered into the frame line so the weight distribution is a little bit better so for pure off-road riding this would be the type of setup um, you'd want I talked about the Trek 1120 which is the equivalent of this salsa um, it's a similar setup but the way the frame bags are just tied in are a little bit more secure so this is kind of a little bit more of an off-road bike than even the 920 but um, it you know it gives up a little what the 920 has because it is heavier and wider and it's of course a tiny bit slower on the road and maybe on uh, easy gravel so um, you know bikes are like your skis <laughs> uh, there's there's one for every condition and um, there's no one perfect bike but it just depends sort of what kind of trip you're doing um, I, I really like the 920 because it can kind of do everything and you could set it up as a bike packing bike but if I did that I would need to take the racks off and get wider wheels and tires or right wider tires and I'm probably just going to end up buying a, a separate bike packing bike and just have it all set up with all the panniers um, and gear uh, this the bike bags rather uh, ready to go and I'll keep my 920 as my general touring and also off-road touring bike if I was going to do a world tour like a long distance world tour um, I probably would take the 920 if I was going to do you know a really crazy like Continental Divide trail or a really long off off road trail type ride then I would look into a pure bike packing bike so I hope this was helpful for you it, there's been a lot of modifications I've done with this bike it's been on like five or six tours last year throughout the state of Maine during COVID um, you know anything from a couple days actually single day hundred mile rides to like five day um, multi uh, area rides um, a lot of off-road on-road combo rides gravel roads uh, some single track and uh, just some really great camping with the bike in the wilderness um, it's really a fantastic bike it's got to be one of my favorite um, and it goes pretty fast on the road. I mean, it, it's I've done centuries on this bike without any problem fully loaded um, Or without any panniers. The nice thing about the Ortlieb setup is the panniers come off really on and off really easy So you can just like pop them off get your campsite set up um, etc uh, Anyways, if you have any questions, um, please uh, shoot me a, a note in the messages and uh, hope to do more of these and I'll probably be doing a review of the Trek 1120 when I get it. Alright, thanks. Bye.